um, another way of looking at disruption. Um, and it's what I'm choosing to call waves of disruption. Um, so why waves? Why waves of disruption and why does this matter to us? Um, so let me go back to Kodak. And I talked about Kodak last week, but I want to present Kodak in this light again. Uh, no pun intended. So um, in 1986, Kodak invented the world's first megapixel camera. Uh, in 87, they released seven digital imaging products. I mean, they were the leader in digital imaging. You could say that they invented digital imaging. Uh, in 1990, they developed the first worldwide standard for digital imaging, and they released the first professional digital camera in 1991. So you cannot say that Kodak did not know what was coming. They absolutely invested a lot of money in digital imaging. Uh, and how much money? Um, in fact, they're, um, they were forecasting a $225 billion market for digital imaging. That, that's from the CEO, Patricia Russo. And they had invested $5 billion in R&D. $5 billion over a decade in digital imaging. Um, so you know, we said last week that the big mistake was that they were still thinking about the business model of digital photography in the same way that they were thinking about or they were doing uh, paper and, 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 and film photography. So they made money every time anybody clicked, whether it was on the film or printing and or printing. I mean, that was a pretty nifty uh, business if you could have it. And they were thinking that they could do the same thing with digital imaging, which, of course, they could not. Now, here's the question. Um, why couldn't um, Kodak catch up? They had the technology. They knew the market, right? So what if they were a couple of years behind? If they could just figure out what the right business models for digital imaging were, couldn't they catch up? And that's a question that um, a lot of large companies um, should ask themselves. I was having a conversation once with uh, an executive from an oil company about solar and EVs and whatnot. And basically, um, what I was told was, you know, yeah, we get solar. We get it. But we could buy the whole solar industry with one day of revenues. Right? So that's the hubris of companies that are going to be disrupted. Right? They think they can catch up. They think that yeah, it's all right, we can wait, right? Because we can buy the whole industry. This is a couple of years ago. Um, at some point, we'll just buy out the companies. Um, so let's, let's go back and look at Kodak. So when Patricia Russo, the CEO, was forecasting a $225 billion market for digital imaging, that is the growth of uh, the number of photos taken each year. It was pretty substantial. Uh, it was growing very fast. Okay, and then what happened? Boom. It just collapsed, just like that. Print photography, not photography, because the number of pictures kept growing exponentially. If anything, it accelerated. It way accelerated once it went uh, digital because guess what? Digital photography is free. Okay? 
just like solar, right? It's free once you install it. And you can't compete with that. But could Kodak catch up, right? Two, three years later, when they saw Flickr, when they saw all that, couldn't they catch up? Couldn't they say, look, we have a lot of money in the bank. Let's catch up. Here's the, the problem. Let me go back to um, something called Handy's Law. So Handy was an Australian uh, employee at Kodak, Kodak Australia, who mapped the basically number of pixels per dollar. And it turns out that the number of pixels per dollar was growing or had been growing since 1994, no, 1984, at a compound, at a CAGR, of 59%. That's, that's pretty fast. Do you remember uh, uh, Moore's law? What's Moore's law? 41%, <coughs> right? So digital pixels were growing, or pixels, were growing faster than uh, Moore's Law. And since the release of the iPhone, it's been growing at 96% per year. 96% per year over the last few years, which means that the number of pixels per dollar, the, the CAGR is actually accelerating. Now, what does this mean for a company like Kodak that was thinking 59%? when suddenly it actually accelerated to 96%. So here's something that we need to uh, remember. The rate of acceleration is accelerating, okay? So a lot of times people think, yeah, solar is growing at 48% and has been growing at 48% since 1990, but that's way too fast. It's got to slow down right? Wrong. In the U.S., solar has grown at 70, 80 percent over the last few years. And in fact, now that uh, uh, it's hit, it's below retail cost, it may actually accelerate. Does this make sense? So many of these exponential markets and exponential technologies, um, the rate of growth actually accelerates at some point, which in and of itself will prevent someone who is two or three years behind from catching up. Does that make sense? If you're not in it, when the wave starts, you're gone. You cannot catch up with these new uh, uh, disruptors, okay? So let me give you the example. Um, the first wave was Flickr. Flickr and companies like Flickr, okay, who, you know, we just posted pictures uh, on the web and blah, blah, blah. And then came Facebook. And Facebook added the social aspect and added, you know, a couple of things. Boom. Facebook became right away the biggest uh, photo company on earth. Right away. Then came Instagram. Instagram went from zero to, well, a billion dollars in valuation because look at the growth. Where's Instagram? Instagram went from nothing to yay big and Facebook had to buy them or they felt they had to buy them because otherwise they would have taken over the whole social picture aspect of, of, of the web. But wait, there's more, okay? Now that Facebook acquired Instagram, there's another company. Do you know Snapchat? Amazing. Snapchat just, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in a couple of seconds, has come out of nowhere to pretty much be the largest or the second largest uh, digital imaging company on earth, out of nowhere. Okay, these are waves, one wave after the next wave after the next wave. If you're not here in this first group, you can't catch up, 
You just can't. Does that make sense? So that's waves of disruption. Um, market adoption is accelerating. So if you look at, for instance, um, PC desktops, it took them maybe 20 years to get to 40 million. And then the laptops grew, you know, they were introduced in the mid 90s and they got to 40 million in about five years, maybe 10 years from, you know, from, from time equals zero. Look at tablet adoption. So every one of these waves is shorter and shorter and shorter, right? It is very, very difficult if you're not in it, if you were not already building a tablet to catch up with Apple and um, Google with the Android, right? It's just hard because the rate of market adoption is accelerating and the exponential uh, improvement of technology, they're both accelerating, okay? So these are the waves of disruption. So to give you numbers, it took 12 years to reach 50 million laptops. It took seven years to reach 50 million smartphones. It took two years to reach 50 million tablets. That's how much market adoption is accelerating. Disruption comes in waves. The first wave wipes you out and you think it's over. And then the next wave comes and the next wave and the next wave. If the first one doesn't wipe you out, the next one will, okay? Um, as soon as a company is a leader though, somebody is right behind them. So Flickr was a leader and boom, Facebook just boom, right? And then Instagram out, came out of nowhere, okay? So if you want to stay on top, if you want to stay a leader, let alone stay in the consideration set in the market, you have to be on top of these waves. You cannot wait. Choosing to wait is choosing to be disrupted. Does that make sense? Okay, now let me show you Snapchat. Snapchat, May of 2012, maybe a million uploads per day. April of 2013, just a year later, they were at about 150 million uploads per day. September, the latest number, twice. It's accelerating. So Snapchat came from basically one to 300 million uploads per day in a year and a half. If you think you're the leader in digital photos, well, watch out. Does that make sense? Wave after wave after wave. Basically, it's been driven by teenagers and politicians, right? Uh, for sexting. Um, got it? Yeah. So, okay. So, um, so disruption comes in waves. The rate of acceleration of technology is itself accelerating. Um, the time between waves is getting shorter and shorter. Um, and the likelihood, frankly, of catching up is anywhere from really hard to good luck with that. Okay? And that's why a Kodak uh, could not catch up. Just could not catch up. Question. Yeah, but I mean, sometimes though, still the, a brand can still catch up. I mean, we all know that the almost dead, yeah. although they had invented yeah. things earlier than, than Windows, yes. then they came back somehow with something else. So why did Kodak yes. come yeah. up with being, right. being the snapshot next or Yeah, so that's a good question. Apple came back, right? So what did Apple do? Apple came back in another category, right? right? They could not come back in PCs. In PCs, they could never break the 10%, and Apple was almost bankrupt. And it was with the MP3 player, with the iPod, uh, in which Apple defined a new category, um, and then they won. Does that make sense? Yeah.